Well, howdy. Welcome to Fishtails. Well, it's Saturday or Sunday afternoon. Took care of everything that needed to be taken care of this morning. Good service at church. That was fun. And I'm going to go out and catch some crappie for dinner sometime this week. But before I do that, I'm going to tie up a dragonfly. I've been thinking about a dragonfly tie that uses uh, fly line for the tail because it floats and feathers for wings. The ties that I've done in the past have used hook holders. This plastic that hooks come in, this stuff is, is quite strong. It makes good wings, but well, when you cast that stuff, it sounds like mad. <laughs> all over the place. And they twist the snot out of your line. So to combat that, I'm gonna change my build a little bit, change the tie into something that I believe will function very well for wings. Let me get my stuff together and I'll start tying it. Uh, it's also constructed backward from the usual manner. The hook actually comes out the front of the fly instead of the back. Let me show you. Let me get started. All right. This is a pretty simple fly because there's, there's not much component wise. I got some old fly line. You know, I think this is old fly line, but it might actually be line I never put on a pole. But anyway, old fly line. I got my thread. I've got a relatively short shank hook. That's going to make things a little bit tougher, but I, I'll show you how I deal with that. And I've got my wing material. This is what's different. I'm going to use this stuff as wings. I hope it works. All I need is a profile, and that's I think these will do fine. All right, let me thread up this hook and get after it. Most of my flies, I'll go ahead and Flatten the barb. The vice jaws work real good at doing that. There we go. Flat as can be. Now, I'm gonna, actually, I'm going to bend this hook straight. There we go. Now I'm going to hook straight. And it's pretty good in the vice. So I'm just going to thread it up. It's not going to be a lot to work with on this fly as far as room wise. Basically, that hook is going to stick out right out the front of the fly. Oh, dang, I didn't get my scissors. Oh, I found a pair of scissors. They're crappy, but they'll work. All right, once you get that on there, first thing you're going to put on there is your tail. Let me show you how to make a tail out of fly line. I've actually done this with monofilament too, but I want this fly to float on the surface. I need to find the oh there it is. Need a little piece of this. I'll make it about a foot. I won't need that much, but make it about a foot. It's gonna come out the back of the fly. So you tie this in. One piece of it, you tie it in. I'm gonna run it down the length of the <laughs> the length of the uh, hook mainly because it floats it'll build up the top of the fly and it is a little difficult doing this first part because that line wants to get in your way all right there we go now all you gotta do is take this stuff and start twisting it Twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it. I got a lot more line than what I needed, but that's okay. Lot, 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 lot. Twist it a bunch. Then you have to hang on to it. Reach down here about the length you want the tail to be. And let it go. And see how it rolls back on itself? There you go. That's how you make rope. And you pull that on top of that fly, 
and cinch it down. Cut it off like that, and you have a tail section, and that was easy. Now the advantage of this is I did leave the eye of the hook open. You could tie to there, or you could just tie right on to the end of this line, the end of this fly line, the end of the tail. Doesn't really matter. I, I, I think, I don't even know if it matters whether this thing floats free or what. I'm also going to, most of the dragonflies around here are blue, so I, I'll come back with my magic marker. Matter of fact, I might as well do that right now. And color this thing blue. It doesn't, it neat because it, it creates the pattern that you want of light and dark on the fly. Shame it doesn't do that with my fingers because now I got blue fingers. There we go. Now I got a blue tail, and since it's fly line, it's floating fly line, it'll float. Alright, now the next step. The next step involves a little bit of foam and a little bit of one of these hackle feathers to create the legs. Alright, I can't find my blue foam, so I'm going to use some white foam. You just need a small piece of this, and you want to cut it about like that. That's probably too thick. Let me cut that down. Alright. And of course, you put a point on it. Like that. And you want to tie this on to the hook. About to where the hook, where the uh, eye of the hook is. Forward, 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 tightly. Tightly, tightly, tightly. Down the shank of the hook just a little bit. Then you're going to come back up. And you're going to actually make the eyeballs right here. You just tie that over. And that makes a head. Now I'm going to mount the, the uh, wings up underneath that foam. That head didn't turn out so pretty. Alright, I made some adjustments. I wanted the head to be a little bigger, so I doubled up the foam. It's a little different technique. If you use thicker foam, you'll get a better head out of these things. This is very soft, very uh, thin foam. This is about the thinnest foam I've got. Alright, now I'm going to attempt. I'm going to put some legs on this thing. And all you got to do is run a single hackle up underneath the base of it and then do a few wraps like this. And we're going to double up that foam. All right, that will give it legs or well, the illusion of legs. We'll tie that in. Cut that off. Now this is where it's going to be. I hope, I hope you can see this. I'm going to tie the foam down like that. And then I'm going to run my thread back up to the mid section of the fly. I'm going to take it over the top because you're not going to see this part. All right, there we go. Now I've got some legs sticking out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this foam back over top and latch it down with the wings sandwiched underneath it. All right, we need we need some little short feathers, four of them, to be on this fly in a crisscross pattern. We're going to try to do this. Like I said, this is the first time I've used feathers to do this. I don't know how good they're going to work. There's one. There's one. There's 
there's number two. Oh yeah, this will work. You gotta remember this thing is gonna it's going to emulate a dragonfly that has landed in the water and he's about ready to be eaten. I don't know how perfect these things have to be. I really don't. I guess it depends on how hungry the fish are. That one needs to come back just a little. Alright, there we go. One last one. And that one looks good. These are just going on in an X pattern. Ooh, this is a pretty little fly. Looks like a fairy. All these purple colors. Alright. Let me cut this off. I'm going to hit that junction point there where these come together. You can see how that's an X pattern. I'm going to hit that with a dab of super glue and then I'm going to pull that foam over top of it. Right. A little dab of super glue at the base where all those little wing parts come together. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to use that foam right on top of that. Actually, I am going to double wrap this dude. I'm going to go in front of those pair of wings. Let's see how that works. Oh, I don't like that. Alright, back to plan B. Alright, there we go. I'm going to do the same thing here. Well, let me put a knot in this. Okay, there we go. Let me put a little super glue right on the threads. Alright, let me cut off this excess, pull it back away from the head. That shapes that fairly nice looking. The proportions aren't real good on this fly. Like I said, I haven't spent a lot of time perfecting it either. But let me get my blue magic marker and make the top of this fly blue. What you're looking for is that profile. See how it's kind of an X profile? And those feathers will not get in the way of when it's flying through the air. I'm going to go ahead and blue the head up real good. All the sides. Ooh, that thing is blue, blue, blue. I'm going to leave the underside lighter colored. All right, now I'm going to make the eyeballs. Just a black magic marker right in the end. You know, I guess if you wanted to, you could actually put eyeballs on this thing. But I bet you don't need them. And I'll bet the material, this particular foam, this foam is not tough enough to handle that. I'm going to make the whole head black. There we go. Cut my thread out of the way. Let me put a dab of super glue on the bottom just to hold those threads. Bind that thread body together. Like I said, you could tie it in underneath or even run it through the tail and then tie it in. Uh, this 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 is this fly is a candidate for um, tying a leader on it first, or tying your tippet onto the fly so that you know it's tied on that hook. It comes out, goes through the tail, and you leave a section you know six or eight inches long. And you tie onto that instead of the fly itself. But there you have it. There is a dragon fly. That doesn't look too bad. The only thing I've 
<laughs> the only cost for this fly is blue fingers. <laughs> I think I'll take that out and throw it with my four weight. That thing's going to hit in the water and it's going to land like that. And it'll have a profile of a dragonfly. One thing I like about feathers is they are tough. They're much tougher than you'd think. And in this case, they're thin. They'll, they'll go through the air without making much uh, noise or interference. I suspect this thing will still twist, but it won't twist as bad. And, you know, if, I'll, I'll show you how to work this fly when I get out to the ranch. I'll spend a little time testing it, see if it works. I'll bet the brim tear it up in small bass. But that, that hooks out the front of the fly. It's going to be going like this, so it ought to have, ought to have no trouble setting the, setting the hook if they grab a hold of it. Let's go see if it works. Well, that didn't take too long. I made it to the ranch. Here lately, this has been my favorite place to be. See all the dragonflies? <laughs> well, I got something for them. I just tied that up. And we're gonna tie it on my little four-way or three-weight rod, I guess is what I've got. And see if we can get anything to think it's real. Pick it up. I'm just gonna fish primarily right now from the shore. I see a little bit of fish activity. You can see them moving in the shallows down there. They are chasing dragonflies. There's just a lot of dragonflies out here. I'm getting my gear set up. I need to re-rig my four weight to allow for this kind of fly. Isn't that pretty? That's a heck of a good tie, I think. I went ahead and tied onto the tail. I buried the eye of the hook. <laughs> but that's fly line. That stuff is tougher than the line itself. I do have a little bit of concern that this fire wire, that six pound test fire wire on my leader, on my little three weight rod, I'm a little concerned that that fire wire will cut through that fly line but we'll see i know it's strong stuff what do you think it's gonna work i bet it does the two objectives is to create a fly that has something that looks like wings that don't interfere so much when you're casting it i'll have that tiny little barrel swivel I may have to take that off. It may be too much weight and it may sink this thing. This is also a twisted furled leader made out of fly, made out of uh, tying thread. All right, let's put this thing to the test. Right out there. Oh, I got, there's some fish moving and there's plenty of dragonflies. Boy, there's a lot of dragonflies floating around. And this thing really looks good. It has got a very nice profile on the water. Oh, we got some thunderstorms. Well, there'll be something jumping on that any second now. That shallow water is awful warm. But that fly is doing exactly what I needed it to do. It casts very well. Doesn't make any noise. Those wings do not interfere with the flight while it's, in, while it's being casted. It doesn't appear to be twisting or anything. Now let me see if I can catch a fish with it. Looking at it. Oh, 
I'm putting this in. Couple. Oh, done. No, no, they're all there. All the wings are still there. It's working. It's holding up. Not catching any fish, but it's holding up. Thunderstorm looks like it's moving this way. <laughs> no surprise these fish aren't jumping all over this thing. Not, probably not presenting it right. Problem with having trees behind you. To get the distance, I really ought to get in the water. Hang it up all over the place. I caught a tree branch and took it right out of there. <laughs> wow. Wow, that's a mess. Catches trees, oak trees. Pulled the branch right off it. I don't use weak line. I don't lose flies. Right, let's try again. All right, let's get the yak out. I need to get the pet to crop it. Get some croppies. I'll take this one with me. Looks good. That fly does look nice. There it is. That thing looks good. I got I got confidence in it. These fish weren't cooperating at the moment, but I think that's a good fly. I think that'll work. Hey, thanks for watching. Y'all be good. Bye.